Happy Spirit Week. All right, we're going to go over why remarriage is against God and why divorce is against God and the only cause of divorcement. The only cause of divorcement, the only cause of remarriage. First, I'm going to leave it out, even though I'm going to get to Scripture. I'm going to start out by saying the only cause for, for uh, divorcement is fornication, as if your spouse is cheating on you sexually, sexually or they shouldn't be cheating on you, period. And the only cause for remarriage is if your spouse is if your first spouse is widowed that's the only cause for remarriage and I'm gonna start it out as that I'm also gonna uh, speak speak on I'm also gonna say that God's Word is not an opinion It's not just a second opinion God's Word is truth God's Word is fact and everything I'm speaking is fact it's not opinion God's Word is more than all these other religions it's not an opinion there is no proper way to interpret the there there is no interpreting the Bible you interpret it from Hebrew to English or Hebrew to your other language not everyone speaks the same language and that's why you have different interpretations it doesn't matter what the original context was they interpret it into the English context it doesn't matter you want to know the right right English con the right English text the King James Bible is the right English text any other any other Bible you, you read is not a, is not of God if, if, if you're reading any other English translation other than the King James Bible just to put that out there it's, there's no other proper English translation besides the King James Bible and that's not an opinion, that's a fact. There's a difference between opinion and fact. Just to put that out there. So we're on the same page. If we're not on the same page, then you're following then you're already deceived. You're already deceived of yourself. Just to put that out there. I wanna go ahead and put that out there. The word word of God interprets itself. But the question is, are you reading it in context? Well, if you have the Holy Spirit, you would know if you're reading in it, uh, if you're reading it in a context. All right, so we're gonna start this out as start this out from Matthew 19, Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. It says, "And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery." So there's a cause and there's an effect. So if you marry, if you remarry someone, except for the cause, well, if, if you divorce, if you, my bad, if you divorce someone, except for the cause of fornication, there, except for the cause of them fornicating, fornicating with someone else, or with themselves. Masturbation is fornication. Then you cause it them to commit adultery. And and whosoever marrieth her which is put away doeth commit adultery. And if you marry someone who see says her, it goes both ways. If you marry, if you marry some, if you marry him which is put away, then you cause him to commit adultery. See, and whoso marrieth her which is put away doeth commit adultery. There is no proper way to interpret that. It interprets itself. Read it as it is written, and you would understand. Read it as written. It said, as it is written, it says, and I say unto you. Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her which is put away, committeth adultery. 
It says what it says and means what it means. There's no proper way to interpret that. It's already interpreted. This is the English translation. The Hebrew translation says the same thing, just in their own language. Amen. Now let's read. That's Matt. That's Matthew 19, verses 9. Here's Matthew 5, verses 32. And this is the gospel. Part of the gospel, anyways. Matthew 5, verse 32. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causing causeth her to commit adultery. And who or him to commit adultery. And whosoever shall and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, or him that is divorced, committeth adultery. Notice. And yes, I've, I've, I'm reading it out of the King James Bible. And I made sure I went into, in, in the actual Bible to make sure they didn't twist anything up on here on the, on the phone. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, save for the cause of fornication, cause of to commit adultery. Notice. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Oh, let me put these headsets in. Testing. 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 Hopefully y'all can still hear me. Sometimes the mic messes up. Alright. So, you you have read that Jesus is, Jesus is against divorcement. It is a sin to to remarry someone while your spouse is, is yet still alive. Your first spouse is yet still alive. See, Matthew chapter 5, this is an extended the extended verse Matthew chapter 5 Jesus and Jesus says and hath been said and ha and hath been said see he's, he's uh, quoting something that was from the book of Deuteronomy Moses uh, gave a, a writing of divorcement in the old covenant this is the new covenant see Jesus Jesus didn't come the father didn't send his son to destroy the law so Jesus is not the father the Father is made manifest in him. Jesus is not the creator. Jesus was not in the beginning with God. Just to put that out there. To squash all confusion of the devil. The Father is made manifest in him. Jesus didn't send the Father. The Father didn't send himself. The Father sent his only begotten Son. Not to destroy the law of the prophets, the old covenant, but to fulfill it. So the old covenant has been fulfilled. Now there's a new covenant that we must obey. There's a new covenant that we must obey. So everything that is in the new covenant, we must obey it. We must not be bound by the old laws, because there's no way we can commit. There's no way we can keep the whole law that is in the old covenant. There's so many of them. In the new covenant, there's only few. See, God has made it easier for us. The Father has made it easier for us by sending His only begotten Son into the world. Amen. Now, if you want to be bound by the Old Covenant and do away with the New Testament, then good luck. You're not going to make it. I hate it for you, but you're not going to make it if you're just bound by the Old Co by the Old Testament. You're not going to make it. And you're all going to go to hell. You're all going to go to hell because you're not going to make it. There is no mercy in that. Alright, All right, so Matthew chapter 5, 
it hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. That's the old covenant. That's not so since the beginning. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Now let's go to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. So if you divorce your wife and, and marry another, or if you divorce your husband and marry another, and, and marry another husband, that's for the women. Women, if you divorce your husband and marry another. Men are not with men, and women are not with women. That's an abomination before God. So, so women, if you divorce your husband and marry another, you're committing continuous adultery. As long as you're with that other, it's not ordained by God. And if you feel, and if you feel led, it, 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 see, many people are saying, "Well, why am I being led back to this person if God, if it's not ordained by God? Well, God is not leading me back to that person. That's the devil." See, even Satan himself comes in the form of light. These fall the fallen angels, they come in the form of light to deceive many. So so don't be deceived into thinking God is leading you with that person and putting you with that person. He is not. He may have put you in, in the in his, in their path, but it's not the way the devil is deceiving you. He didn't put you in the path to be together with them and fornicate with them. That is adultery. It's not fornication, it's adultery. It would be fornication if you have never been married before in your life. If neither one of you have been married before in your life, that would be fornication. Now, if you were looking at them with lust, then you would be committing adultery and fornication on top of that. Because Jesus says, those who look at someone with lust, if you look at a woman with lust, if you look at a man with lust, you're committing adultery in your heart. It's like, if you watch porn, you're committing adultery. You are lusting after, after someone else having sex. You are committing adultery. If you are masturbating, you are committing self-fornication. You are having sex with demons. So, Matthew chapter 5, verse 31 through 32. And I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, that's the only cause for for divorcement. It's for the cause of fornication. That's the only cause. There's, if, if your wife is abusive or is your, if your husband is abusive, that's not a good reason to divorce them. There's no, there's no proper call. That's not a proper cause for divorcement if they're being abusive. See, uh, many preachers get and hopefully those preachers are giving them the right answer. Many many pre preachers preachers forgive me. Many preachers give. Uh, so I'm in, I'm completely in the spirit right now. So forgive me if I mess up a word because I'm speaking too fast. I'm in the spirit. So um, many preachers they get a lot of an a lot of questions on that. Well, what what if our our relationship is abusive? What if it's a abusive abusive relationship? That's not a cause for divorcement. Take it, take it to the Word of God. The only cause for divorcement is fornication. Jesus said so. God manifest in the flesh said so. Flies flying around everywhere. Um, And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Now, there is cause for divorcement. There is cause for remarriage. The only cause for remarriage, which I'm going to get into that, which I've already got into it in another, another video, and I'll post that video as well. 
I'm just focusing more on the divorce part. I'm preaching more of a fiery message in this video. I'm, I'm going to be more serious in this video. More bold, put it that way. There is a cause for remarriage, but only if your first spouse passed away. Only if your first spouse had passed away. So, are you supposed are you supposed to be like David and, and send and send them out to war and get killed? No, that's murder. That's murder. David even got punished for that for doing that right there. David even got punished for doing that there. You are to be bound with your husband and bound with your wife till death do you part. Until there's a reason why why there's that saying there. Till death do you part. It comes from the word of God. That saying is real. It's not man made. Through sickness and in health. Alright, let's go to another verse. And after the after this, bear with me. After this, I'm going to give a fiery message that many people don't want to hear. But if you're in the if you're truly in the spirit, and you're truly walking in obedience and desiring to obey God, then it would be easier for you to accept what I'm saying. But if you love your if you're one of the, one of those that love your sin, and you just want to continuously seek after those seek at, seek after fables to tell you what to tell you what your itching ears want you to hear, twist the word of God to sugarcoat. Oh, preacher, tell, tell me it's okay for me to remarry. Tell me it's okay for me to sin. Okay, give me some money and I will. Just fill my, fill, fill my uh, church building up and I will. Fill my synagogue up. Fill my seat every Sunday or every Saturday and then I will. I'll tell you what your itching ears want you to hear. I'm not that type of preacher. I'm ordained by I'm truly ordained by God. A, pe a piece of paper didn't ordain me. A piece of paper didn't ordain me. There is no license to be ordained. That's not biblical. God ordains. Amen. There is no license to to ordain. See, so the devil's a distractor. All right. All right, here here we go. Romans 7 Romans chapter 7 verse 3. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. So if her husband, if her first husband is still alive, and she mar and she is married to another man, while her husband liveth, her first husband liveth, she is to be called an adulteress. Because that that new husband that she is married to, while her while her uh, godly husband, her her ordained husband, is still alive, that new marriage doesn't count in God's eyes. She is not married in God's eyes. She is committing adultery because it's not ordained by God. It's not or God did not lead her to that other to that other husband. It's not ordained by God. It's ordained by man ordained by man if you're married to another person while your while your ordained husband is still alive then you're committing adultery and you will never be forgiven for that adultery unless you per, unless you first leave that person and be reconciled to your other husband unless y'all be reconciled to each other or remain unmarried remain unmarried or be reconciled to that other person then you will never be forgiven for for that adultery that you're committing. You're just living in continuous adultery. 
No matter if you, God, forgive me, God, forgive me for committing adultery, Lord. Forgive me for committing adultery, but but yet you're still continuing to to be with that person. You're not you're not being serious about asking for that forgiveness. You really don't want to be forgiven. After you ask for forgiveness, you were to repent. So God's not gonna God's not gonna take you seriously as long as you remain in that adulterous relationship. Because you're God forgive me for committing adultery, but yet you're still committing adultery even as you're asking for for forgiveness for adultery. So he's not gonna take you seriously. He's gonna block you out. He doesn't hear he hears you, but you're but he's not gonna respond to you. He's not going to give you a response. He hears what you're saying, but he's not taking you seriously. If any if anyone says that he is, then that's the devil coming in a, in a form of light. Because we got to go based off of what the Word of God says, not what man says. This is not man. This is God. This is the Holy Word of God. Written by ordained holy men. God told them. God told them to write this. They didn't write it on their own accord. Just to squash all that, all, all that uh, contention and and heresy, where man wrote the Bible. No man did not write the Bible. God wrote the Bible through holy men of God. Just like Jesus was a holy man of God, and possesses all the fullness of the Holy Spirit bodily, and he and that's how we are to see him as God. He is not the Father. He is not the Creator. He did not create the world. The Father created the world. And Jesus even said himself, Why callest me the Father? The Father dwells in me. The Father speaks that word through me. It's not my word that I speak. I am not the word. It's not my word that I speak. The Father speaks that word through me. But yet people are still twisting the word of God to their own destruction twisting the word of God to their own destruction going based off of their own personal opinion man made doctrine rather than speaking fact they're creating their own interpretation rather than facts a fact and an opinion are, are two different things two different concepts The word is made manifest in him. The word is made manifest in him. Amen. Right. So, for as long as her husband liveth, for as long as her hu her husband liveth, if she is married to another, she is to be called an adulteress. She is not truly married to that other person in God's eyes. She is still married to that first husband. Just like uh, the woman at the well, people try to use, like to use that to uh, try to justify something. But guess what? That's not a part of this sermon, but hey, God just laid it on my heart, so I guess it is. The woman at the well, KJV. Let's start at, uh, all right, this is John chapter 4. Let's start at verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria. You're going to hear dogs prancing in the background. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciple, his, for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. So, uh, then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh me to drink? Asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, 
if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of me, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that, that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the will, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a will of water springing up in, into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Truly she did. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast, hast is not thy husband. And that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. See, the, the husband she has now is not her husband. She knew that. She knew that. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when, he, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye, ye worship ye, know not what. Ye know not what ye worship. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Invisible Holy Spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That Holy Spirit, all the fullness thereof is manifested in his Son, Jesus Christ. That's why he has all the power thereof. And that's how we are to see him as God. Now we know he is not the Father. The Father is made manifest in him. The Father speaks through him. Just like the Father is speaking through me. He and the Father are, are within me, speaking through me. But I do not have the fullness thereof, like Jesus does. All the gifts were divided between his people. Amen. Alright, let's go back up here. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And in that sayest thou truly. The one she is with now is not thy husband. Their, is not her husband. But the first husband is her husband. So therefore, now that now that she has received that re received that revelation from Jesus, now that she has received it, hold on. She went back. It. She's she's either remaining unmarried, which is not, it's not really saying it, it doesn't really go into much detail on whether she remained unmarried and and left that left the people she was committing adultery with or whether she went back to her first spouse but she done either either one of those right there she did not remain she did not remain with that with that fifth husband that she was with she left that fifth husband for Jesus so she's either remained unmarried or she went back to her first husband and reconciled amen that's how you read that in context I'm sure she was born of water and of the Spirit. Amen. All right, let's go to Rom let's go to Romans seven, verse two. Romans chapter seven, verse two. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if thou husband be dead, she is loose loosed from the law. Of her husband again 
The only cause for divorcement is if, is if you are widowed. Now, if you are widowed and your husband dies, or if your wife dies, woman, if your husband dies, or, or men, if your wife dies, you are loosed. You can re remarry, but do not re remarry someone who has been divorced, because you would still be committing adultery even though you're widowed, because you're marrying someone who has been divorced. So although you may be widowed, that does not give you the cause to marry someone who is not yet widowed. Their spouse must also die first before you can marry before you can marry that other person that's widowed. That is why you must harmonize scripture. All all scripture uh, is given by inspiration. All scripture harmonizes with each other. Now, although the Old Testament has been fulfilled, we're not bound by the old covenant. We have a new covenant now. New commandments we have to obey. A new law we have to obey. We're not bound by the old covenant. Some of the things that were in the old covenant still remain, but a lot, but all, a lot of that has already been fulfilled. There's no way we can be bound by that. And we, there's no way we can uh, live by that anymore because we'd all be in hell right now. Not many people made it back then. Not many people had had the amount of mercy we have now, back then. There's no way we can handle, especially especially this generation. This generation can't handle that uh, the law back then. This, we would all be dead and in hell right now if it wasn't for the new covenant. And that's how you know that the new covenant is true, because if the old covenant truly truly wasn't fulfilled. There would be no flesh alive right now. All those people that are still stuck in this old old uh, covenant, they, they're not living long. They're not living long because they're rejecting Jesus Christ. They're rejecting the Son of God. They're anti-Christ. If you only go based off of the old covenant, then you're anti-Christ. You don't believe that you don't believe in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ didn't come until until the new covenant. Until the New Testament. They didn't have Jesus Christ. They didn't have the Son of God back then. They just had the Father. Now. I know you don't want to hear this. I know you don't want to hear it. But as long as you are continuing. In those adulteries. You can't be forgiven for it. Unless you take it seriously. And repent. Because, because if you ask for forgiveness while you are yet still continuing in continuous adultery, then you're not truly asking for forgiveness. You don't truly want to be forgiven based off of your actions, based off of your fruits. You're, you're not truly really asking for forgiveness even though you say, God, please forgive me. He's not taking you seriously. Now, I'm not, I'm not the one to please people's ears and itch people's ears and tell them lies and sugarcoat the Bible. I got the Holy Ghost in me. I'm going to speak out of boldness. Because I love you. Now, if I did not love you, I'd sugarcoat the gospel and gummy bear hug you straight to hell. Oh, it's okay, sweetie. It's okay. You will go to heaven anyways. You will go to heaven anyways. You can commit it. You can remarry. You can commit adultery. You can get high, smoke weed, get drunk. It's okay. But I'm not doing that. Because I don't want to go to hell with you. Instead, I'm going to do everything I can to try to persuade you. Get that blood off of my hands. I love you. Now go in peace.